Question 2 says, Figure 2 shows a rock found by a student on a beach. To help identify the type of rock, the student took measurements to determine its density. Now they've taken some measurements to determine the density of the rock. To find the density, remind yourself what measurements need to be taken. So recall the formula for the density. The formula is density equals mass divided by volume. So the student will have to take a measurement for a mass and a measurement for volume. When it comes to the volume, there are two types of solid objects, regularly shaped objects and irregularly shaped objects. In this case, it's a rock. So the rock will be irregularly shaped object. It says describe a method that students should use to determine the density of the rock. So we have to describe a method. So our annotations they tell us a few things. Number one, we'll have to record mass. And we'll have to record volume of irregular solid. And number three, if I say this is one, this is two, this is number three. For number three, what I'll do, I'll divide the value of one by the value of two. I'll start with number one. I'll say my density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. Now this equation will guide me what I need to do. So I'll say mass. To measure it, I'll use balance. To measure the volume, I'll have to use displacement method now. Okay, so I'll use displacement method. Now we need to describe what is displacement method. So I can say fill measuring cylinder with water but I can say halfway. Then I'll say record volume this is my v1 then i'll say add rock to the measuring cylinder and i'll then record volume again this is my v2 then i can say to find volume of rock, I'll have to do V2 take away V1. And then I've already told them that I'm going to divide the value of mass by the volume. And that would get us full marks on this question. Next part says the student determined the density of the rock to be 2.55 plus minus 0 0.10 grams per centimeter cube. Now this means his value has this much error. It says what are the maximum minimum values of the density of the rock? So the maximum value will be 2.55 plus 0 0.10 and that gives you the answer of 2.65. So the minimum density will be 2.55 minus 0 0.10 and that gives us answer as 2.4. Next part says table one gives the density of five different types of rock. So they've given us five different types of rock and they've given us the densities. Remember, they've given us maximum and minimum possible densities, which can be worked out using these values for each type of the rock. It says which two types of the rock in table one could be the type of rock the student had. Now, our rock has to have this density. It can't have anything other than that. In case of the first option, the biggest possible value will be 3.00 and the smallest will be 2.80. So if I look at it, my rock has to be between 2.45 and 2.65. They don't lie in this case. They don't lie between these two values. Therefore, it can't be this type of rock. For the second option, I can work out the two values again. It will be 2.50 and it will be 2.20. Now the value of 2.45 is below 2.50 and it is above 2.20 so it is possible that our rock might be of this type 
Next one says 2.60 and plus minus 0 0.10. So I can work out again, it will be 2.70 and 2.50. Again, I can see 2.45 and 2.65. They both are within this section between 2.5 and 2.7. So it is possible that our rock might be of this type. Now it says only two types. So I can, I've already worked out. So I'm going to say it will be chalk and or flint. Last part of this question says, the student only took one set of measurements to determine the density of the rock. So this one set is of key importance here. So it's explained why taking a measurement more than once may improve the accuracy of the density value. Now, when you talk about the accuracy, if you do it only once, and if you've made an error while recording a value, what will happen? Your final value of the density will not be correct. So if you repeat it, or if you do it more than once, then there is a good chance that if you've made an error, it can be eliminated easily. So we can say here, anomalies can be removed. And in addition to this, if you have more than one value, then what you can do is you can always calculate the mean value of the density. So we can say mean density can be calculated. Now, when it comes to mean, I would like to remind you that there are two types of errors. One is called systematic error and the second one is called random error. By taking mean, you reduce the random error. You can't reduce systematic error by taking mean of the value. So we can say reduces random 